Our first session after lunch will be on sustainable development practices in hotels and restaurants and the necessity of LEED certification of hotels. I'd like to invite our three presenters who will take us to this session. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome on stage Mr. Ranjan Khatri, General Manager, Welcome Environment Initiatives, RTC Hotels. Mr. Niranjan Khatri. Please do also welcome Dr. Gassan Aidi, President IHRA. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Gassan Aidi. And also the IHRA, please welcome Mr. Pedrag Bozovic. When I asked him whether he had his lunch, he said, I've skipped my lunch because I'm here for business and for love. Okay, so whatever that means, we will find out by tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, I hand you over to Mr. Ranjan Khatri to take you through the session with his co-panelists. Mr. Khatri, over to you, sir. Can you hear me? You can, okay. Uh, I have a lurking feeling that FHRAI doesn't like me because uh, they always squeeze me for time. And uh, I have to rush my presentation like a Rajdhani Express. But nevertheless, I'll do that. But the vindictive person that I am, I'm going to take my revenge because they've squeezed me by playing a small game with. Brad, can I play a game with you for three seconds? Please come here. Okay. Uh, you have opened a matchbox many times in your life, yes. right? Yes. But have you ever seen a transparent matchbox? Okay. You've never seen one. I'm yeah. showing you one. I'm showing you how to open it. I'll count one, two, three, okay. and close it. And when I count one, two, three, you're going to open it, and your time starts now. One, two, three. I'm sorry. Your time is up. And uh, for n not performing, you, sorry, I you, give you a chocolate. Okay. Okay. Can you do that with Dr. Eddie as well? <laughs> Please. <laughs> and I'd also like to give you a, a sustainable report of ITC. All right, thank you okay, much. thank you very much. <laughs> I think it's very important that we have to sh uh, realize that we have to sharpen our perceptual skills because all of us uh, suffer with a disease called inattentive blindness where we uh, are hearing but not listening, seeing but not observing. And I think the domain of uh, sustainable development, you have to sharpen up perceptual skills and look for the innumerable low-hanging fruits which are on the ground. So with this little backdrop, I start my presentation. And uh, I've changed the uh, headlines a little bit. And I'm saying the key role of tourism industry in sustainable development. It touches different stakeholders. And why? Because in our business, people come from all walks of our life. If, if we embed sustainability in our every service design, they get to feel it, they get to see it, and it has a cascading impact. And we need innovation in the field of sustainable development. Uh, many times, you know, you see this kind of picture in all the parks. Pictures are actually meant to clarify issues. But, you know, if the angle is right, then the picture can be absolutely wrong, as it is in this picture. ITC has been in the field of sustainable development for nearly two decades, and uh, we are perhaps the only company which is water positive, carbon positive, solid waste, recycling positive. And uh, on the social front also, we are impacting lives of more than about 55 million people in uh, helping them to enhance their productivity in the farming sector, to enhance the water moisture in uh, villages, and to uh, empower women through economic routes so that the attention gets on the girl child who's highly neglected in this country. And I'll quickly take you through some of the uh, paper cuttings which I uh, cut in the last two weeks when I was traveling here and there. And uh, these are pictures of what happened to India about two months back when there was a grid failure and half of India was in darkness. And I'm sure all of you have seen this. And this was recently in Bangalore where the chief of the uh, municipality was sacked because of uh, waste. Yeah piling up in the city. And uh, uh, green building is now the norm. And these were some of the headlines which I picked up from Times of India just a few days back. Some more pictures of that. And uh, here's an example of how now Delhi is aspiring to be a green city. And they're going to solarize whole of Delhi. 
Now, when Delhi does something, it has a cascading impact on the whole country. So I think it's on the right direction. And this brings me to the question of how do we change our accounting system so that our accounts people learn to internalize all these uh, issues. And the language of account is embedded with lovely words like principle of prudence, principle of consistency, etc. And I'm going to just play on the word of principle of prudence. And I'll leave you with questions, and I, I won't answer the questions. Not using daylight when there's opportunity available. In many restaurants and hotels, it exists. How do we internalize this and start switching off lights? It does not require any capex and, and helps you in your opex. Using sanitary band in WC, not required today, if you're confident of your sanitation. Using doily paper between saucer and cup, I still find that practice all over the country. Uh, not implementing rainwater harvesting and buying tanker water, it doesn't make sense. Installing tubs when uh, surveys reveal that only 5% of the tourists use the tubs. Why waste capex and opex? Using oversized glasses when we know that the outside reality is something else. So the global industry has an opportunity to collectively work on the service design and bring about a, a tectonic change. Uh, life cycle thinking is still not embedded in the industry as such. And just for your information, ladies and gentlemen, this is a half an hour presentation. I'm just going to gloss over it. Uh, in 2002, there were only 300 life cycle assessors. In 2008, it became 800. And today, there are 1,200 life cycle assessors. We need to have a larger breed of this. And we are all aware of climate change. And uh, according to Nicholas uh, Stern, 1% of GDP has to be put on um, fighting climate change. If it doesn't, the global economy loses between 5 to 20% of GDP. And you know what happens to your occupancies and your uh, revenues on account of this negative GDP. And ads such as this have started cropping up in international magazines, sink or swim on account of climate change. And uh, we are very close to the coast. And I deliberately bought this uh, subject on our collective radar screen because fish are declining because of overfishing, because of uh, bad practices. And again, last week I picked up this ad from one of the magazines, Save Your Sandwich. And the other challenge that we have is the hotel industry world over is extremely wasteful. And we need to rethink how do we bring about innovation in managing this waste so that the inequity on the food front is also bridged. So, what are the methodologies that we need to employ in order to uh, actualize all this? Bring our guests in the sustainable development equation. Don't just pamper him with things. Let him also know how to use it carefully. Engage guests through creative communication. We have to create a lot of communicati uh, creative communication so that we enter the perceptual arena of their minds. Very simple example, if I'm operating an egg, do I want it with hashed potatoes or tomatoes? Half the time, nobody eats it and goes in the waste. First we buy it, then we process it, then we make it, then we put it in the dustbin, and then we are handling and grappling with waste. These are issues that we must internalize and work upon. And we are all aware of the deforestation. And I'm sure you don't know what this picture is all about, but it's an aerial view of thousands of logs being transported in the Great Lakes in, uh, in Canada. And, uh, that's why the state of a forest is what it is today. And yet, there are such beautiful forests where the trees are close to each other, but the uh, uh, leaves don't touch each other. And this presentation, again, one hour, I'm just going to gloss over it. And let's look at monsoon, since we are in the midst of monsoon in Goa. We get three months of monsoon in this country. It rains for 100 hours in the three, uh, three months, and it rains intensely for 10 hours. And this is now changing on account of climate change. This year in India, we had a late monsoon and the monsoons are becoming more intense and short in nature, and we are unable to hold that water, and therefore, we have to be creative in announcing and storing that water whenever the water is available. And if we, whether we like it or not, by year 2020, India is going to be a water stress, which means that we'll have only one lakh liter of water per person per annum, as opposed to having six lakh liters of water per person per annum in 1947. And therefore, we in ITC have made a beginning by trying to drought-proof, and we work in an area of 90,000 hectares in several states. And uh, we also moved into the green building in 2005. This is my office where I sit. And uh, in uh, 2009, our first hotel, the ITC Gardenia in Bangalore, became the first platinum-rated hotel in the uh, existing building category. And uh, last year, 
uh, all our existing hotels became uh, platinum LEED certified. So what are the key features of a green building that you have to focus on energy efficiency? And our green building in Gurgaon, we have saved 51% of energy by design intent by using daylighting. If we had made the building with a, a business as usual approach, we would have used about 6.35 lakh units of energy per annum. We are using 1.35 lakh units of energy per annum. And what we have done is we have put high albedo paint on the rooftop, which can be done in any existing building to reduce your air conditioning load. Because air conditioning load, as uh, ladies and gentlemen here know, is a, a chief source of uh, uh, cost and consumption. And uh, water also, in terms of water, we have reduced our water consumption by 40% in our building by design and 10. Our building is a zero discharge building. And uh, thereafter, we have also disconnected the water in our urinals, and we are saving 300 kiloliters of water in our GNC urinal. The size of the prize is not 300 kiloliters. The size of the prize is that when this gets replicated across the country, then there's a huge opportunity for doing away with several dams on account of use of fresh water for urinals. And we see that many of our visitors who come and see us, they ask us for the address of this person, and they have replicated in their respective offices. How do we scale it up? Uh, what's the trend in green building? Close to about 1.2 billion square feet uh, uh, under green building is under construction now, and uh, likely to be 16 billion by 2020. Second largest footage in the world. Uh, but is this good enough? No, because in India, this constitutes hardly about 7 or 8 percent of new building stock. So we have to see how do we tweak our um, building bylaws and integrate it over there so that even if I do not know anything about green building, I make a green home. And this leads me to another question of why aren't we looking at uh, brick technology, which is, I think, very archaic, and why isn't work done so that bricks are made in such a way that tomorrow I don't need air conditioning? This is a wish list. Let's hope it happens in the near future. And we now need to move away from electrical, mechanical, and civil approach to biomimicry. How do we mimic nature and reduce our energy intensity and water intensity? And we have made a humble beginning in ITC Mughal, where when we replaced our sewage treatment plant, we have put a new plant which works on plants, which absorbs the sewage, and we get clean water. We have reduced our energy consumption and water consumption. Uh, sorry, uh, energy consumption and uh, chemical con con consumption. And look at it, how it's enhanced to the natural capital of the place. It's nice and green. And uh, it's very important that we start decarbonizing our operations to the extent possible through use of daylights. These are low-hanging fruits. But we in ITC have now gone for wind energy, and four of our hotels are operating on wind energy. And as I speak today, 38% uh, of energy comes from renewable sources. And these are some of the turbines that we own in uh, four states. And we have also internalized the concept of environmental externality. In simple language, it means that if I'm driving a car, I take responsibility for my emissions, and I pay for it. So in ITC Gardenia, when we were constructing this hotel in uh, 2005, we had the opportunity of cutting 20 trees, very beautiful trees, 60-year-old trees, but we spent 600,000 rupees in relocating these trees. So in the bargain, for the city, we have created a value, a national capital value of nearly 3.2 crores or 32 million dollars, uh, rupees. So, <clears throat> and here again in ITC Gardenia, the coffee shop is non-air conditioned, and uh, the lobby is non-air conditioned, and this again leads us to the fact that we are not only saving energy, but we are also saving the embodied water of our thermal power. Because thermal power industry is the most water thirsty industry in the country, and if you reduce the consumption of uh, thermal power in your respective establishments, you are saving water. And uh, way back in 2000, we installed this small concentrated technology which works for about, uh, cooks for 15 people in uh, uh, 45 minutes. And uh, we had a dream that one day we'll have a larger version of this. But in the interim period, we shared this knowledge with a lot of NGOs, and one NGO took this knowledge to Leh Ladakh, and thousands of such pieces are being used over there because in Leh Ladakh, the temperature in winter is minus 30, 35, and people don't take a bath. And today, this device is being used to melt ice to have a bath. And the army has replicated this model in their large uh, establishment, and they are cooking with this device. So our own dream materialized only in 2009 when we installed this large solar concentrator, which weighs about 150 tons in ITC Moria, and helps us to uh, reduce our diesel consumption by uh, 13 liters of diesel per hour. <coughs> and uh, uh, 
Uh, two years later, a company from South came to see this. They have done something better. They have used this technology for air conditioning, 1,50,000 square feet of their factory space. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, many of our policies are uh, slightly uh, defective in terms of design, like this beautiful teapot with the handle and the spout on the same side. And we need to see how do we rectify such policies so that a change comes on a grand scale through policy signals. But applying this idea to the social dimension, uh, we started an initiative for people with disabilities some six years back, and then uh, Government of India suggested we employ people with multiple disabilities. We couldn't do that, but what we did was the discarded flowers of our two hotels in Delhi is being given to people with multiple disabilities and their abilities to break the petals from the stem, and from that, colors extracted and sold to the textile industry. So, and they get paid 2,000 rupees for this work. Now, this is an example of triple bottom line concept, wherein by sharpening your perceptual skills, you have created and upcycled the waste. You're not downcycled it. We could have composed it, composted it. We have given it to people who don't have jobs to do that job and create colors out of it and lead a life of dignity. I think there are ample such opportunities uh, lying in every hotel. I saw so many flowers being given to all the arrivals in this hotel, I wonder what happens to these flowers in this particular hotel and everywhere else in, uh, and everywhere else in the country. And uh, we have also, based on our experience with people with disabilities, written a book on how to make infrastructure barrier free so that all organizations like ours can get more footfalls on account of more senior citizens entering our hotels and restaurants, provided we uh, give them basic amenities of ramps, etc., etc. So, what kind of legislation can we have, self-regulation, the industry can have? Uh, can the gateway hotels, say example in Mysore, I've used an example of Mysore because I was there recently, it's the gateway to Uti, Kurg, and uh, Bandipur. Can we put do's and don'ts for our tourists of what to do in Bandipur and what not to do? Because that knowledge is not there in our tourists and we have to embed them with that knowledge. And <coughs> We need to tell them what kind of dresses they wear, because I was in Kashmir two weeks back and I found people in their dancing shoes trying to climb up slopes and falling off. And it can go along with your confirmation. Technology is there, so it's not very difficult today. Or it can be embedded on your website. There are so many options. It's for you to decide. Uh, how do we train our vocal cords? You know, because when we go to the forest, you must respect the home of the animals. I have seen people screaming, playing transistors, what have you. Can the transporter sitting in this room can the small resorts owners who are in such places, can they sensitize their respective ecosystem? I don't think so. We should always expect the government of India to do everything. I think we have a major role to play in this area. Can we think of green banquets? I am very uh, happy that Sunit has uh, started the journey by you know, not laminating this uh, name card out here. I mean, I'm a prepaid card. I have a shelf life of 70 years, perhaps. But if we had laminated it, this would have lasted for 1,000 years. So we have to think that the industry which decides and makes products designed for obsolescence sometimes does things for a millennium, and that doesn't make sense. And whenever you do anything, I love this quote of Mahatma Gandhi that first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. So we have to take this into account while working on change. And we need game-changing innovation at all levels, at national levels, and I'm so happy that by year 2015, a government of India is going to first produce this green GDP report. And we in industry need to see how do we dematerialize many of our processes. And Sunit has already done this by not using plastic on it. Buy services, don't buy products. Products with low embodied energy and low embodied water. Unless you ask these questions, the supply chain is not going to change. First time when you ask this question, they'll stare at you. What the hell did you say? But from there on, they will also work on that front. Uh, I think this is a lovely quote. Wisdom lies in knowing the unknown. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I think the gentleman is not here to, <laughs> to announce it, but I will announce myself. <laughs> I think they left us all. I don't see anyone. They left us and that's all, but that's fine. I mean, I don't mind. Before talking today about this issue of sustainable development, several people from you came to see me this morning and yesterday. 
They say, why we never talk about sustainable development five, ten years ago? What it is exactly those two words, sustainable development? Then I decide to change my presentation and to start to talk to you a little bit about the climate change issue. Because the issue of the climate change push us to arrive to find solution for our uh, that. Well, our, his, our hospitality industry is a victim of the change of climate. Breathe fresh air from the mountain, listen to the vibrant silence of the summer evenings, smell the salty perfumes of the ocean, those wonderful things should not disappear. The growing international awareness about the fast change of the climate change taking place on our planet together with the impact that such changes are having on the natural environment, on humans and their economic activities have become more than evident. Some facts. 2009, we just arrived to 976 million of tourists. The expenditure was something around 885 million. It was generated more than 4% of our PIB. The average temperature grew 0.6 degree during the last